Hello again, my beautiful princesses and my handsome princes and my parents who are tuned in into my lessons. Hello, I am Auntie Karen, and today I'm going to teach you something that we are all guilty of. Even as adults, we are guilty of it sometimes. Now, there are times when we are writing. We are writing a text, we are sending a text, or we are writing a story or a message. And sometimes we are confused as to what words we are supposed to use because there are words that sound alike but are spelled differently and have different meanings. And then we end up using the wrong word and look stupid after a while what if we realize that oh, it's the wrong word sometimes i see these things in text some spellings and words that we see yes these words are tricking us these words i'm telling you english language is complicated at times because these words they sound alike spell differently and have different meaning. Why is English language so complicated? But have no fear. Auntie Karine is here to teach you about some of these words and how to use them. Now these troublesome words are called omonyms. Yes boys and girls, take this off. They are called omonyms. And omonyms, now there are different types of omonyms. And the one word that is giving you trouble is the homophones. There are words that sound alike but have different spelling and meaning. So they are homophones and homophones are a type of homonyms. And the homophones are the ones that we mix up all the time and other words too. But they are the ones that we mix up all the time, using them in a context that they are not supposed to be used in. Now here are some frequently misused homophones or homonyms. Now this one especially, I see this all the time. There and there. Yes. Now this there is the there that shows ownership. It is a possessive noun. It shows that something belongs to a group of people or a group of things. It is ownership, shows ownership. The book is in their room. See? Now this there indicates a place. Go over there. That is for this there. And a lot of time we misuse these two words. There shows. Now the next misused words are break and break. Now this break, B-R-A-K-E, this one, it is a device used for slowing down moving things, like a motor vehicle. So this is the brake. This is the one on the motor vehicle and they step on the brake so that the motor vehicle can slow down or stop it. Now this brake is when you pull something apart, like your break off something or you dismembered something like um you have a stick and you dismembered it you pull it apart so you break it so this is it and this break too is also like you're discontinue doing something you are working or you're reading and you stop for a while or you pause for a while you break for a while and then you go back so this is the break and I've seen these break used incorrectly also. Now these words, oh 
my these words yes great and great so often so often used incorrectly this great indicates something big or huge now this great You know, like when your mother is greater in the, the carrot or coconut, so you grate the carrot and you grate the coconut. Yes, this is this great. And I also see people using this, put, in, put on full on this word and say grateful. I am grateful for having the Lord in my life. And this is the grateful. Wrong. There is no such word as this grateful. This is the correct grateful when you're showing gratitude. This is the grateful. There is no word as this grateful. And I've seen this a lot, so get this out. Never use that. This is the correct one. Now let's go on to no. I know and yes yes people use them incorrectly this no with the K silent K because N is beside it so the K is silent so this no indicates your knowledge of something I know what you did last night this is the no for it and this no it gives you a disapproval to something. No, you cannot go outside. So you are not approving. So this is the no for it. This, right and right. Yes, people misuse them. This right, the double right, Oh, and double is silent in this word because the har is beside it. So you say right. This right is when you put prints in book with like a pencil or a pen or you type. So this is right, that right. And this right is to indicate that you are wrong. You are going contrary to something. So you are wrong. You are not right. So next time when you see these words, make sure you think about the context that you're using them in and use them. Now there are many, many homophones. Now here are some again. Now we have three different words that sound alike but are spelled differently and have different meanings. Now this is bear. Bear and bear. See how confusing this can be for children who are just learning to read and to write stories. Now this bear, the B-E-A-R bear, refers to the animal, like the huge bear in the jungle or in the forest. This bear, B-A-R-E bear, refers to something that is naked doesn't have on any covering it's naked the floor was bare or the child was bare it's not she's not wearing anything she's naked now this bear if this is the alcohol or the liquid that is consumed the one that we drink the bear that the men buy at the bar this is that bear now moving on to three more homophones by 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 and I've seen them misused this by refers to when you're purchasing something I buy ice cream at the shop this is the buy you're using if you're going to write about getting purchasing something from somewhere or someone with money 
or whatever, this is the buy. B U Y. Now B Y is a preposition. Yes, it's a preposition to show relationship in a sentence in parts of the sentence. I sat by Felicia in class. I live by the lake. This is the by you use. Now this BYE by it is used when you're leaving the presence of someone. Or you want to leave the presence of someone, you tell them, bye. So this is the bye. B-Y-E. Think before you write them. Now we have three more. Fair, fair, and fair. Now this fair refers to can refers to a light complexion like a brown skin person you say they are fair in color or it can refer to a recreational activity that we do at school like we have a fair at school this fair is the one that you pay for rides on buses or cars or in your taxis. So you pay your fare. This fare is when you are afraid of something or someone. I fear dogs. It means you're afraid of them. Maybe they will bite you so you won't go beside them. This is the fare. Now we have stare and stare. This stare refers to steps in your house or in a building that you have to go up on or climb. I climb the stair. This stare is when you look intensely at someone. You know, when you see somebody just a look on you, like Jamaica people say, and I pre you, they yeah, stare intensely at you. This is the stare. Now, here I have an activity that we can do. We're going to do it together. And we're going to choose the correct word in the sentence so based on how they are used we're going to see which one is the correct one go over there just show indicating a place which of these there would i use would i use t-h-e-i-r or t-h-e-r-e -E? yes T H E R E. This is the one that indicates a place. Go over there. But this one shows ownership for something. The book is in their room. Let's do the next one. I drink. Will I drink B E A R? Or B E E R. Yes. B E E R. Bear. This is the alcohol or the liquid beverage that we can drink. And which bear is this? Yes. The animal that lives in the jungle or lives in the zoo or in the forest. This is the animal. And let's do this one. Pay me your fare. Fare. Which of the fare? Is it F A R E or is it F A I R? Very good. F A R E. This is the fare or the money that you pay for rides. Fare or drives in vehicle. 
But this one, this is the one that refers to your complexion or an activity, a recreational activity that is kept probably at school or at church or somewhere. Now this one, I great great the carrots. Which one of these great would you use? Is it the G R E A T or G R A T E? Very good. G R E A T. This is the great. Now, which great is this? Yes, the one that refers to something big or huge. Last one. I buy or buy ice cream. Which of the buy shows that you purchase something? Is it B Y or B U Y? Very good. B U Y. This is the one that shows that you bought something somewhere, probably at the shop or at the supermarket, somewhere where something is selling. Now, this buy, it shows the relationship of two parts in a sentence. I live by the lake and that's when you do that you use that by so parents you can continue to do sentences with children so they can know which word are on the phone there now i have a game for you that you can do with your children now this is crossroad puzzles now let me rub, let me take this out now for this puzzle, and it's related to the homophones that we just did, it says find the homophones in the puzzle for each word. So these words, write them beside the word. So we're going to find the homophone for there, T-H-E-R-E. Now -E. what is the, the other there that is spelled um, differently but sound like there? Very good. T H E I R. Let's look in the puzzle. T H E I R. Nice. Yes. So we got that one. There. T H E I R. Now let's go to stare. S T A R E. Mm hmm. Now, which other stair we have that is spelled differently? Yes, S-T-A-I-R, the one that we climb on. We have that stair. And we have other stairs too, but we're going to do that one. And let's look for S-T-A-I-R. Now we're going to break. And what's the homophone for break? What homophone are we looking for? Very good. B R E A K. That's right. Now we're going to do fair. F A I R. Hmm. Now we have more than one fair. We have F E A R and we have F A R E. Yeah, let's see if any of those fair is in the puzzle. parents this is one that you can do with your children play with them and they would love it and if they're not remembering you can remind them remind them of the meaning and of the spelling and then they will find it and in over time they will get used to it so enjoy this puzzle